Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back your lovely faces to a brand new video here on the channel. Well today we're going to be taking a look at something which is actually kind of hysterical because a lot of people thought this is exactly what was going to happen and what we're going to be talking about is Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power which is currently on Amazon, the first two episodes are out and even though you got a couple of replaces giving it outstanding reviews well, they seem to be the ones who uh, the ones who had access to a lot of early Lord of the Rings stuff. So let's get into it. This is coming from Variety. And as you can see by here, Amazon's delay for the Rings of Power reviews on Prime Video part of new initiative to filter out trolls. Now, what they want to do is basically, because there's been a lot of things going on regarding this TV series, where... When you got people on YouTube and you got like the Washington Post, Entertainment Weekly, and a host of other genuine film critics saying, it's all right, not exactly amazing, then they're going to try and filter it out. So what Amazon have done, they've introduced a brand new weapon to introduce in the battle against internet trolls, delays. Starting around the time of the launch of the distaff baseball dramedy A League of Their Own, which premiered in full season on August 12th, they quietly introduced a brand new 72-hour delay for all user reviews, posted to Prime Video. A representative for the streamer confirmed to Variety. So obviously with that there, they know for a fact, for a series like Lord of the Rings, and for these especially these first two episodes, which there is a reason why they released the first two episodes, is that 72 hours, people will already have watched the first two episodes. The majority of the people who wanted to see this show would have already watched it. But 72 hours, three days, and that's because the first episode is one of the most boringest hours ever created for TV. And that's not just coming from me. When you have people on YouTube who has filmed countless hours of movie shows tv shows the ones who review all of these things the ones who have worked for all these companies and they're like yeah i'm so happy they released the second episode because i would not have gone past the first that's bad when you have these type of people saying that you know it's bad but we also got something to look at in a minute which is actually really funny but getting back to variety it does say obviously the practice court notice after the premiere of the first two episodes of The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, Prime Video's monumentally scaled fantasy series based on series, excuse me, based on the works of J.R.R. Tolkien. The series appears to have been review bombed, not just people actually, you know, not liking it, when trolls flooded intentionally negative reviews for a show or film on other sites like Rotten Tomatoes, where it currently has an 84% rating from professional critics but a 37% from user-submitted reviews. So, normal people can't give their own view. When someone gives their view and it doesn't give something just praise, which is what Amazon is hoping for, they're like, oh, well, they're a troll. Obviously, they're a troll. No, it's just that people just, uh, they just don't like it. That's the fact. So many people have done it. But regarding that there and them saying, oh, professional critics have done this, well, we got... Entertainment Weekly, right by here. The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power Review. Amazon's prequel is kind of a catastrophe. You got that one there. Given this, <laughs> give this appendix an appendectomy. And you got uh, this one here from the Daily Mail, where the Daily Mail, even themselves, gave a rubbish review. But this is from people who are watching it. I had trouble getting through the first episode. Eager fans are left underwhelmed by hotly anticipated The Rings of Power as the first two episodes of Amazon's billion-dollar epic finally drop. And it goes on, so you know, down by here, you got uh, Calderal. Excited viewers were eagerly awaiting the first two episodes to drop at 2am Friday morning UK time, but appeared disappointed by the results after binge-watching the one-hour installments, as it received very mixed reviews. Die-hard Lord of the Rings fans took to Twitter to admit they had trouble getting through the first episode, of Amazon Prime's billion dollar token epic, while others describe the characters and plot as dull. One viewer wrote, I've loved everything The Lord of the Rings for decades now, but I had trouble getting through the first episode. I'm still going to watch all the episodes before passing judgment on the show as a whole. Hashtag Rings of Power. 
Don't get me wrong, it looks spectacular. That is not what people are going on about. They're just saying that is literally just dull and boring. Another said, I tried to start the Lord of the Rings trilogy last night for no reason at all. I got the best sleep I had in months. <laughs> you got this in here, obviously, just more uh, things of it. A third commented, This show looks very pretty, but most of the characters are dull, which is unfortunate because Lord of the Rings usually has engaging characters. It was, eh, I kind of struggled at points to keep watching since most of the characters are boring. I'll keep watching. While the fourth added, the snow troll was well designed. Some scenes felt like raw Lord of the Rings online nostalgia. That's about the only positive I've experienced so far. An episode and a half in. The fifth fumed, if the concept of secondhand embarrassment were a TV show, it would be the Rings of Power. Not all fans were left underwhelmed by the Amazon series though, however as others took to social media to comment on how nostalgic the series was, while others urged people not to make early judgments. So with that one, you know, like we got by here, loved everything you know, going on, EC. It's a little slow, but it's pretty. Just got out Rings of Power, cheap FX, bad music, amateur writing, bad acting, especially from Galdoriel. One th good thing was the dwarf, but I may be biased. Rings of Power, this show looks pretty. Most of the characters are dull, which is unfortunate. You got so many people going in with this, but obviously you do have the other ones, which you are going to get, you know? Ah, Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. I'm fangirling so hard, it's so good already. Lord of the Rings is something else. So much nostalgia. See, this is what it is. So many people are just saying nostalgia factor, and it looks pretty. That's what they got. But another thing. This is the Washington Post. The Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power is beautiful, banal, boredom. Banal. So lacking in originality as to be obvious and boring. The funniest thing with this is uh, the Washington Post is owned by Amazon. How funny is that? The paper that you own, you thought they would give a great review no matter what. But they've basically come out and said, yeah, it's absolutely rubbish. It's just boredom, which seems to be a lot of a lot of the general consensus regarding this TV series. And it sucks. I will admit that absolutely sucks to see. This TV series has been my most anticipated ever since they announced it. Because I absolutely adore Lord of the Rings trilogy, even The Hobbit to some extent. But I also love the 1970s Lord of the Rings cartoon. I thought that was phenomenal when I was growing up. I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. We need a film of this. Peter Jackson came along, made the masterclass of epic films. Then he made the Hobbit series. And I really do think that Amazon should have, instead of saying, you know, oh yeah, we want Peter Jackson, blah, blah, blah. And then just ghosting him. They should have got him and his team just to be some kind of, just to help, just to go along with certain things and just to pan things out because... The people who they've got invested in this series, people behind the scenes, they're all very, very skilled at what they do. It it does. It looks beautiful. I will admit that. It looks absolutely gorgeous. The creature designs look great. But when you've spent $250 million just for the rights, and then you're spending a billion dollars on the show itself, come on. Try and get a show that actually has a fantastic story and does not make people go along saying, it's boring, it's boredom, what am I watching, why is this going out, you know, just, you need to get them to be hooked in from the get-go. People who are going to be watching this from the get-go as well are going to be hardcore Lord of the Rings fans and just normal Lord of the Rings fans. You're not going to get people from outside who are like, Oh, what's this? Lord of the Rings? Oh, I haven't seen them. It's not those people. You need to make a story that is going to connect to each and every one. Which, they're going to say, well, that's hard to do. No, it's not. So many TV shows and so many films have done that. I just don't think they got the correct uh, writers on the job. I really do think they probably picked the wrong ones. And the showrunner, they could have done better. I really do think so. But that's what we got for this one by here, ladies and gents. If you want to be kept up to date, please hit the uh, subscribe button down below. It is the big red button. Please like and subscribe. You know, keep the notifications on if you want. And I'll see all of you very soon.